Good day viewers and welcome to the program Agriculture on the Move. My name is Philip Sidney, your host. Today we are discussing a very important topic and that is sea turtle harvesting in the closed season. However, to further discuss this with me in studio is Mrs. Sarita Williams-Peter who is our chief fisheries officer attached to the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Welcome to the program, ma'am. Thank you very much, Sydney. Nice to be here. Great. In this COVID season, by, I don't know how we do it, but we have to import, in, in, what, what do you say? put things in place to ensure that we can have a program. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Lisa, let's look at um, not only um, turtle, but I know there are other sea species that are being regulated. Um, could you give us an overview of this, why there's regulation, uh, so that the public can understand the rationale behind this? Okay, so thanks very much for that. And I think um, the last time I was on the show, I spoke about our fisheries policy. You're right. And one of the policy priorities included ecosystem health and integrity. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the core functions of the department is to maintain ecosystem health and integrity, which means that we need to regulate harvesting of our various species of fisheries importance. Mm -hmm. And we have a few of those species that we do have measures in place um, to protect the species. And this is really important because at the end of the day, as a nation, food security is very important to us, yeah. and we need to be able to ensure that whatever we are harvesting, we give it a chance to replenish itself, yeah. right? So if you go out and you keep taking all the females, all the young ones, you will end up with a population mm -hmm. that cannot reproduce, yeah. and that is shrinking over time. And so the Department of Fisheries role is to take a look at the different fisheries and ensure that we put measures in place working along with the resource users, with, along with consumers, to ensure that we have that sustainable supply. So when we hear the word sustainable, it's not this buzzword we, that we just use. Mm -hmm. It's really about whatever we take, we give it a chance to replenish itself. So the population doesn't go down, it stays stable. And we also look at not changing the population structure too much. So you know in a population you have old people, young people, younger people, different age groups, etc. Same thing with fish species. We try as much as possible to maintain that same um, classification of animals because all of that helps maintain a healthy population. Is, it that, is that an international law that you'll follow or is, or is it just a policy that you should adopt? It's actually both international, regional, so we follow because a lot of the species are shared. So you can't necessarily look at, for example, wahoo and dolphin fish and say that's St. Lucia fish. They migrate, they pass through waters of many different countries. And so these countries come together, we bring in scientists, they look at the biology of the species and make um, as best as possible decisions on the science to decide what type of measures would be best to protect them. And so the species that we, in St. Lucia, we've been looking at specifically are our conch, queen conch, sea urchins, sea turtles, lobster, and for general fin fish, like um, our reef fish, we do have other measures in place, not specifically related to the biological controls, but things like gear restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, so I will go through all of these and I will give the audience an opportunity to hear what are some of these measures and why they're, they're in place. Well, can you, con can you continue? Yeah, sure. So some of these include, for example, area and time restrictions. So in the case of, for example, reef fish, 
there are area restrictions, so places that you cannot fish. And these are our marine reserves. We have quite a few marine reserves around the island. And for example, the Sufi Marine Management Area is one of the typical areas people be familiar with that has marine reserves. And we do not permit fishing in these areas. Marine reserves serve as protecting the habitat and the fish within there so that they can mature, get older, reproduce, and in what we call the spillover effect. So if they're in an area and they're allowed to reproduce and, and they're young, um, comes out when there are too many, a lot of them, it gets crowded, uh, so they will move, migrate. migrate, move into the other areas mm -hmm. where you can fish. Okay. So, it's, it's, so that is a principle of marine reserves. Mm -hmm. And this is why we indicate to people not to, to fish there. there are, and then there's time restrictions. So mm -hmm. the time restrictions are periods of time in the year where we indicate to um, fishers that you cannot harvest. And these usually coincide with uh, breeding times of, of the species. So for example, lobster, there is a closed season and that runs from March 1st every year to August 1st every year. So during that time, people are not permitted to harvest, they're not permitted to sell, expose for sale, or have in their possession lobster. Mm -hmm. And that is because during that time, the lobster, that's what we have found, is that it's, a, it's major or main um, breeding period. And again, understanding sustainable harvesting, you want to give the animal a chance to reproduce mm -hmm. so that it can replenish the population. So when you are taking or extracting um, the animal from the water, you are giving it a chance to keep its numbers um, up, Great. right? And the same thing with the sea turtles. There is a period of time, the March to November every year, where you have sea turtles are nesting, they're reproducing, they're coming on our beaches to lay eggs. And so you want to create a period of time where fishers are not allowed to fish because the turtles will be coming up on shore and you don't want to interfere with them. So that's the time restrictions, right? And then we also have the other biological controls like the size restrictions. So the lobster has a size restriction as well as the um, sea turtles as well. So for the lobster, the size restriction is 9.5 carapace length. So most of our um, individuals will be aware of that because most of our purchasers at hotels, because we've done a yeah, lot of sensitization that. of our fishers and purchasers so that they know to measure the lobster before they, they take it. Um, and so we encourage people to know that there's also size restrictions for the sea turtles that they can't, people can't take a sea turtle of a certain size. Mm -hmm. Again, all of that is related to one, you do not want to extract from the water a lobster that has not had a chance to reproduce. Mm -hmm. Because if you keep doing that, you're not gonna give the population opportunity to replenish itself. Mm -hmm. So you have to allow it to get to 9.5 and above. That figure was calculated based on data that told us that if it arrives at 9.5, the majority of the population has had a chance to reproduce at least once mm -hmm. before you extract it, exactly. right? And the sea turtles, when it's a certain size, it is still considered immature. It hasn't had a chance to reach maturity level to breed. So therefore, it's not, it's not permitted. So these are some of the measures. Even with the conch, mm -hmm. the conch must have a flared lip. When the lip is flared, the, the shell is flared. You know those beautiful shells that people would mm -hmm. come and polish yes. and of the lovely mm -hmm. pink inside. We want that flared lip because it tells us that's an adult conch. Okay. And so therefore, you're not extracting juveniles. Right? Um, there's also gear restrictions. So with the gears, there are different restrictions on the mesh size, the size of the mesh. Mm -hmm. And again, that is to allow for fish of a certain size, which probably has not reached maturity, to not to be captured um, before mm -hmm. taking in yeah, it. Yeah, right. right. Now, I must uh, indicate that it's, science is not perfect. <laughs> right, 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 right? Right, right? Science is not perfect. There are times when maybe the restrictions should be more rigid, but 
we operate on what we call a precautionary approach. Mm -hmm. We do our best so that we can advise our public and our officials as to what the regulations are. Mm -hmm. We involve them when there are cases where we may need to increase the restrictions. There are times where we may realize, okay, we could relax it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But generally, given the state of our global fisheries, it's important for us to abide by these restrictions. Mm -hmm. Because illegal harvesting will result in an impact on our food security. I noticed that you all were relaxed at one time when it came to the sea eggs, sea mm -hmm. um, But I'm not seeing that anymore. What, what you all is, is still a, a moratorium on? Yes, so that there is still a, there's still a, there's a closed season. So what we do now is we do an assessment. So sea urchins, it's just like human beings, all animals have specific behaviors mm -hmm. that we look at and we adjust the regulations based on that. So for example, sea urchins have known to be um, animals that would reproduce or, or colonize an area when there are other sea urchins in the area. So if you um, engage in overfishing or extracting too much in an area, it will result in less sea urchins colonizing the area, which means that you're going to have a reduction in population. So what we do is we go out into the water, we look at what the population first, the, the amount of animals that we see, and we also look at the population structure, meaning what are the different sizes, size classes we call it, mm -hmm. of sea urchins in the water. Mm -hmm. And if we realize that you, you're not getting that healthy mix of animals in the different size classes, or the population is probably too low to sustain harvesting, we will not open the season, mm -hmm. right? And what is happening now is the illegal harvesting when the season is closed is impacting the ability for us to open the season oh, because yeah. you go into areas and you realize it has already been harvested. harvested illegally. And so it impacts fishers who are registered to fish, who are mm -hmm. licensed to fish, and they cannot um, enjoy an open season. There's another delicacy. Um, the, what do you call it, uh, the crayfish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I notice if you go in the rural areas and there's any, any um, D, any, you know, party, you'll find the crayfish. Mm -hmm. What's the situation of this? Crayfish is actually, is not permitted for uh, extraction. It's based on our legislation. It's in there. Um, part of the reasoning behind that is there was one point where we had a, a severe reduction in the, the amount of crayfish. The population was really suffering. Mm -hmm. We also note that there are very detrimental measures being used to extract crayfish. Yes. Um, there is a use of poisons and toxins mm -hmm. in the rivers. Um, we have received reports, for example, from aquaculture farmers mm -hmm. that have experienced fish kills because of the use of those... Yeah. Um, Kill all aqua life, yeah? Kill, kills all aqua life. Mm -hmm. And just imagine that you are consuming mm -hmm. this, which has been killed using a toxic yeah. substance. Yeah. You are you're ingesting it now. Mm -hmm. So just imagine the impact that it has on your own health. Yeah. So we are very concerned about, especially when you start moving into the October month, mm -hmm. which we're not too far yes, away from yes, because yes. of the Junior Creole activities, mm -hmm. we have seen an increase in the, we do see an increase in the, the amount of um, poisons and toxins used in the water. Mm -hmm. We have also got concerns from WASCO and the impact it has on, on the yes. water catchment. That's so so it's very important that you know, people abide by that. We do provide options. The option is that there are many aquaculture farms Farmers who engage in culture of um, prawns, Macrobrachium rosenbergi, yeah. and people can purchase, purchase it mm -hmm. um, from our aquaculture farmers and use it um, mm -hmm. in the traditional way. But we do not um, ask anybody to use the, the river crayfish, particularly because there is a high risk um, mm -hmm. to human health as well, and, and based on how they extract. Mm -hmm. But those persons, I mean, I remember like a little boy, you know, you go diving and going, you know, between the big stones, pushing your hand and pulling out, you know, like there's a name they call the, the big ones, the, the big, 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 what do you call them, the big Gundies. Yeah, 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 I mean, but so you will not permit that? We do not permit that, yes, yes, we do not permit that. Again, because there is deep concern about how it's been harvested. We operate also on the, on the understanding that we have to look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. 
one individual who is indicating, well, I've cut it with my hands. Mm -hmm. How can you verify that? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they have it for sale. And some yeah. other people have it for sale and it's been killed using poison. How, how does the regular consumer differentiate mm -hmm. between one over the other? Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. that's very important. Okay. So, so it, we, we as a people have to be mindful, Mindless. very mindful of how, how things are done. And that is why, again, I mean, programs like this helps get the message out. That's it's right. important for us as a department to ensure that consumers, yeah, purchasers, yeah, yeah, yeah. understand what the regulations yeah, are. Yeah. Because we as a department can't do it alone yeah. to monitor and enforce. Yeah. We need to have consumers who also are driving the market for certain things. Yeah. So if there is a market for um, sea urchins and for um, undersized lobsters, mm -hmm. anyone who is purchasing, you're part of the you're problem liable. and you are liable. Yes, yes, yes. yes, and you are driving unsustainable practices. Hold that point. We will come back to this because you do for our break. Okay. You're watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public, keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water. Or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available. And avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move, and we are, of course, discussing the harvesting of sea turtle in the closed season. People, that is very serious. So, Rita, it's really becoming a, a huge problem. Mm -hmm. um, suffice to say, I have seen the damage. I have seen where large turtles were, were, were caught and they were slaughtered and people took away a quarter of the meat and they rested to you know to decay i mean that is bad speak to this so that people can understand why they should not harvest the turtle you know in the off season okay thanks thanks for for, for getting us to that uh, i first must address the issue that you mentioned about uh, capture of turtles and I suspect that may have been on beaches. Yes. On beaches. And that is a criminal offense. So no no. No for the entire year, whether the season is open or closed. Right. A nesting turtle should never be interfered with. Again, you want to ensure that it's breeding and it can breed comfortably. Um, so no one should be harvesting sea turtles whereas they're nesting on the beach. Mm -hmm. No one should be interfering with baby sea turtles because one of the things it's important to recognize is that one in 1,000 eggs of sea turtles make it to be mm -hmm. a breeding age adult. So uh, these are precious um, eggs and so everyone that we can keep alive 
and well to get out into the water because they face other stresses, it's important to do that. When the season is closed, we're also asking no one should be interfering with any turtle at all. Even if you had turtle meat on your freezer from the last time, from the last when the fishery was open, mm -hmm. you are not permitted to put that out for sale. And we have noticed some people indicating, well, I've had it from when the season was opened. Mm -hmm. How is it possible to differentiate mm -hmm. turtle meat that was purchased in the open season or closed season when you do that? Um, turtles are endangered species. It's important to note that. Okay. And many countries around the world have actually um, halted having a fishery in the first place. St. Lucia continues to have a fishery because we try to have a balanced perspective and respect traditional practices. Um, however, we do um, recognize that it is an endangered species and so the period for allowing harvesting is quite short. It's three months. It goes from October to December. That is the only time right. that uh, a fisher licensed is permitted to harvest sea turtles and that it can only be done a hundred meters offshore okay. all right a hundred meters offshore and then you you why, can why is that? part of the reasoning is that if the turtle is coming closer to shore that means it most likely is coming to to, to, nest. to nest and so we want to give it that fighting chance to be able to come in to nest and not be interfered because as i said the nesting season is from march to November, right? So usually around October, November is usually the, the, the baby hatchlings that are hatching and going back into the water. But you may get a few turtles still coming up on shore and you want to protect them. Um, another thing I wanted to also mention is that we, when turtles are nesting, it's important in how we behave around sea turtles. Huh? Because sometimes we do get people very excited because it's a very, um, you know, charismatic event when you see a turtle come up and it's nesting and so it's important to re maintain at least a si I would say use the save it COVID-19 um, six, foot <laughs> six foot distance from the turtle to give it a chance to successfully nest because it could get um, agitated or scared off by having too many people around and what will happen it'll go back into the water and lay its eggs there which would mean none would survive so we do encourage people i know sometimes there's a a, a good heart behind it they want to see the process mm -hmm. but just maintain um at least a six foot distance from them yeah okay now the other thing is uh apart from harvesting in the open season there are other economic benefits i know we have tourists coming they go see diving you know also um to watch them nest mm -hmm. or when they come to lay. You know, uh, how is that? Are you also um, ensuring that that happens too? Or you, do you all encourage that activity? We definitely encourage that activity. We had been working with the Debara Sea Turtle Watch Group for many years to encourage um, that program because mm -hmm. at Grand Anse there is a higher number of leatherback turtles nesting there. However, there has been a dip. Um, in their ability to maintain that program, partly mm. because of security of the area of the right, beach. Right, right. Um, and then they do get uh, the poaching happening. So there have been a lot of interventions to help to quell that situation mm. there. Uh, we do have initiatives where we have trained uh, fishers, young people in different communities to become divers and to sort of look at options where they do ecotourism, they go diving, they do um, what we call the coral restoration initiative, mm -hmm. so that they go into other avenues. And I'm certainly, divers, one of the most um, remarkable events that they see is when you go on a dive and you see a sea turtle. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, it, it, that makes your dive, you know? And so we do encourage um, any fish or anybody who wants to go into that avenue rather than look at extraction to do so. Um, but we do respect and understand that there is also that traditional cultural um, activity around harvesting sea turtles. But we are asking that people uh, balance that with mm -hmm. respecting the open and the close mm -hmm. because ultimately we would be left with no choice <laughs> if we continue like that to have a permanent 
closed season if we are not respecting the open and close. Because it really, we must really understand that it takes years before a sea turtle is ready or reaches breeding maturity. age maturity, like, but maybe about 40 years or so. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we maintain uh, the closed season because when you take uh, when you've extracted a turtle from the from the environment it takes a long time before that animal can get um, replaced or replenished um, and it also has a major impact on the sustainability of the fishery right. so we look at very carefully um, illegal practices in fisheries and a lot of the decisions sometimes are based on the level of non-compliance. Yes. So if people are complying, then you can work um, to look at less rigid measures, but there are times if there is, you realize there's non-compliance, there is need to increase um, the rigidity of the measures to maintain the sustainability of the fisheries. Do you have any surveillance um, from your department uh, to monitor the illegal poaching of, 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 of um we do rely heavily on reports from the general public so we would get reports about um, individuals who have total meat maybe in their freezer we've had um, reason to engage the police we do engage the police and they work alongside with us to do um, we do enter various business establishments once we get a report of perhaps sea turtle is on their menu mm. or they may have had sea turtle there to go in and do a confiscation and to charge uh, the person with that the offense of having sea turtle outside of the closed season. But this time around apparently it, 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 it raised some awareness. So what, what, what was more severe this time um, that, that brought your department to the fore to hey let us go back a bit and let us um, get the public out there to be more aware. Was, was there more of the illegal harvesting? Yes, yeah, so we have noticed due to the COVID-19 situation, quite a few people are going into um, fisheries mm -hmm. and uh, many are going into it without the knowledge of what the regulations are. Mm -hmm. um, we have noticed people, more people now, um, being opportunistic, so if they see, they will just grab, etc. And so there's deep concern about the, the, our food security. And so we do realize that there's needs for more efforts. Uh, we have, we are engaging more with the police to help support doing the patrols, etc. We cannot do it alone. We just do not have the manpower. So we really do need the public's cooperation and support. Uh, to report those offenses, to indicate to us when these things happen. Uh, we're working with the police to help strengthen um, fisheries management and enforcement. That, that is an area that we, we really would like to see mm -hmm. strengthened at the department level. Um, and so we see a lot of more interest from the public as well in terms of the reports of sea turtle sightings, etc. We do get a lot more. A lot of the individuals who do the early morning running and exercise, they do give us a call and let us know when they see a sea turtle nesting or in distress, et cetera, which we do appreciate so that we can improve our efforts for patrolling and knowing where nests are and so we can check on and make sure. Over the years, have you all actually apprehended anybody and charged them? And what's, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the fine? We have charged a few people over the years. I think there are probably a few people that need to be charged more. <laughs> um, but we have, we do have charged, we have charged a few people for various offenses, not only sea turtle, but um, lobster, mm. taking conch, um, illegal sizes, etc. There is a fine of five thousand uh, dollars generally, and I think that fine is probably too low. Um, yes, it's yeah. probably yeah. too low. But I mean, our legislation is from the nineteen. 90s so it's you know we do need to um, update the legislation mm -hmm. but there is that fine and sometimes people would uh, agree to settle the offense out of court and what we call compound the offense and they would be charged an automatic one third of that um, amount in the new regulation and that the, the new fisheries policy that did not that was that taken into consideration the new fisheries policy does look at improving our legislation so that we can um, upgrade it so 
to cater for inflation of prices, et cetera, and, and make sure that the fines are more of a deterrent to the activity because we do recognize that there will be people who would comply no matter what. They understand and they will comply. But there will be people who, whether there's regulations, whether there's enforcement, they will not comply. And so we must put things in place to cater for that. In the open season, um, there are turtles that would come to nest and they are tagged. Mm -hmm. In the open season, would you encourage the harvesting of those turtles and slaughtering? We would not because it means, it tells us that this is an animal that has uh, successfully nested. Mm -hmm and therefore you want to give it an opportunity to continue to nest, okay. right? Because um, most of our tagging programs happens when the animal comes to nest, which means that it's a female, and so you want to give it that opportunity to continue to, to nest. Um, however, that we do recognize that there are times when fishers would set a net and a turtle would get entangled and you would not necessarily know whether it's a tag turtle or not a tag turtle. So if it does have a tag and it has been harvested legally, we ask you to um, bring the tag to the Department of Fishery so that we can do a trace because the tags give us information as to where the turtle has been and the different uh, locations that it has been. So it, sometimes we get tags from Martinique, um, Barbados, so that we know that animal has been to Barbados to nest as Five well. seconds, final, final words from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for me, I want to, want to appeal to the general public um, that your actions have an impact in food security in the Department of Fisheries, food security in St. Lucia. It has an impact in terms of what um, what the fishers do and what people who sell um, our fish species do. So you can drive better practices in St. Lucia and if you know the law and ensure that whoever you're purchasing from, they, they are selling you what is legal size, they are selling you what's in the open season, then I think we'll be in a better position in terms of our food security in St. Lucia. Senator William Peter, thank you very much for being on the program. I wish you success and of course continue the education and, and to allow people to know and to sensitize them about the harvesting of the turtle. Thank, thank you very much. much. You have been watching Agriculture on the Move. Thank you for viewing the program. And remember, agriculture is our business. Eat fresh, St. Lucia's best. And don't forget, COVID is around. Stay safe, be careful, follow the protocols. I'm Philip Sidney, goodbye. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.